everybody, today we're gonna discuss about MANOVA, which is a short form for Multivariate Analysis of Variance. It is a simple extension of analysis of variance by considering multiple response variables in order to investigate the mean difference instead of assessing um, instead, of, in, instead of assessing the uh, single response um, variable and uh, the multivariate analysis of variance provides additional information regarding to the statistical model when uh, when the multiple response variable are uh, correlated to each other and it also provides a greater statistical power in case of correlated traits uh, and in addition to that it also evaluates the pattern among the multiple uh, correlated traits and it helps us to reduce the joint error rate. So today we will see detailed information about uh, the multivariate analysis of variance, more specifically the basic assumptions. So in order to run a multivariate analysis of variance or ANOVA in our software, you have to do the following uh, packets. So these packets are mandatory for checking of one of assumptions and of uh, and and of course for computing of statistical analysis we'll later uh, it, it will be up in upcoming video so uh, for sake of the tutorial i already um, run or incorporated all this package into our software and uh, again we will use the data Rootstock, which is found uh, in our software. Then, if you want to see the structure of fruit stock, so type this and submit to our studio. Then, uh, and if you uh, if you want also um, to get the information about the rootstocks, so type the question mark in front of the rootstock and submit to our studio. So you will get um, the detailed information in the right uh, side corner of uh, our our studio. So these are. The detailed information so you can refer it um, from uh, uh, this uh, from this uh, help uh, section so uh, if you want to visualize your data set you can use this uh, syntax but this is not my goal and this is not my objective so i will uh, shift to the basic assumption for running multivariate analysis of variance in our software. So there are a number of um, uh, assumptions. The first one, uh, the first assumption is checking or identifying univariate outliers, and at the same time also checking for the multivariate outliers, checking for for the normality, especially using the Shapiro and the QQ, the QQ methods. And the fourth one is uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, or absence of the multicollinearity, uh, 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 multicollinearity, and uh, again also uh, the last two is homogeneity of variance as well as uh, homogeneity of uh, covariance. So we will deal, we will uh, see how to check these assumptions in uh, in uh, our uh, uh, software. So the first one is identifying of univariate outliers because multiple. Um, or multivariate analysis of variance is very sensitive for uh, outliers and it leads to wrong uh, statistical analysis. So uh, you have to type your uh, data name, then you have to connect this pipe, and the group is rootstock, which is uh, our different rootstocks, root, root starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the basis of uh, this data. And again, you have to identify outliers. This one is grease for is the grease height. Uh, grease height. So you can get this detailed information by typing question mark in front of the root stock. So you'll get detailed information about that. So assume that this is our one parameter. So we will uh, check this grease uh, by typing this and submit to our studio. Yeah. So uh, uh, there is true. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, uh, for example, uh, rootstock 2 for the grease, uh, rootstock 2 again for the other parameters, again here also other uh, parameters. For all cases, it is false, false, but except for the rootstock 6, it is somehow, it is extreme. So it's almost extreme. So, but for, but for the rest, it is true, but 
uh, when you see the extreme value, it is indicated by false false. So if it is uh, considered that uh, it is, uh, if it is um, a result indicates that it is true, so you have to transform your uh, data. In similar fashion, you can do for the rest uh, parameters, uh, whatever you want. So, for example, if you type this one in the Meteor Studio, again, we can uh, get the um, other result. For example, if you see this one, all the extreme value is false, false. Yet it's outlier, but it's not as such as extreme, and it doesn't affect highly our analysis. So, for this parameter, that means for uh, exit uh, parameter, uh, the, there is no suspected outliers, so no need to transform our uh, data. The second one is uh, uh, checking uh, or detecting of the multivariate outliers using the uh, Malonovis distance. Then you have to use this function Malonovis distance, and you have to indicate your data name here, connect with through pipe, then again uh, use the rootstock, maybe it is variety, maybe it is fertilizer, maybe it is um, your factor. So don't uh, uh, forget to include your factor here. Maybe it is irrigation level. So this rootstock is the uh, treatment. So in, sim in, in simple way, it is a treatment. Then you have to type all this uh, syntax in submit to our studio. So it will show you the multivariate uh, out there. So it is zero rows. That means there is no um, multi-varied uh, outliers in this data frame. So it is okay, go for the next uh, assumption. The third assumption is uh, checking the, uh, the uh, normality, especially using the shapiro wilkes test as well as the QQ plot. shapiro wilkes test is advised to use when your number of samples is less than 50 but if it is greater than or if you have large number uh, large number of samples it will affect uh, shapiro will um, be sensitive uh, when you have large number of sample and it is even also sensitive when it is small deviation uh, from the normal distribution so it's not good it's not advisable when you when you have large number of sample of data so it is good enough when you use uh, around 50 uh, samples but if you have uh, 70 80 120 200 or greater than 50 i recommend you to use a qq uh, plot so how to do that you have to use the shapiro underscore uh, test function and indicate the response variables here so type this and tell me to our studio then if you if you get the p bar is greater than 0 0.05 so the assumption is good, that means the assumption is not violated. So type this and submit to our studio. Let's see the p-value for all root stocks. We have six root stocks for the two uh, response variables. The first one is this, second one, the first one is this, and the second one is this. For all except the root stock in the grease one, the p-value is 0 0.0258. 0.0258. So the root stock for this response variable um, normally distributed, normal distribution population uh, or the assumption of normality is violated. But uh, somehow the MANOVA is fairly uh, robust for uh, uh, fairly robust uh, for such for the data that are debated from the normal distribution. No need to worry or no need to um, bother yourself when it is violated this assumption. The second uh, method of detecting the normality assumption in, uh, uh, in a MANOVA is using the uh, QQ uh, plot. So this helps us to check the normal distribution. So you have to indicate here is the data, that means the root stock, the data name, the root stock, and the parameters that you want, that you want to code to uh, or the response variable that you are going to measure you have to indicate here for example i take here is a quiz and uh, so i uh, write this syntax uh, together so um, when you submit to our studio it will show you this graphs yeah so uh, for all uh, for all um, root stock that means root stock one two three 
four, five, and six. All the points are uh, fitted, or all the points are around this line. So this means indicate the normally the or assumption is uh, good. Then the next uh, do in similar uh, fashion for the other uh, parameters. For example, let's say here is the exit for uh, the exit for. So if you submit to our studio, so you will get also the same result. Yeah. So it's good. So by this way, you can check the normal assumption using the Shapiro Wilkins when you run your number of samples is less than 50, and you have to use this the Kiki plot when your number of samples is greater than 50. The third one is uh, checking the uh, multi uh, variate. Uh, sorry, the third one is uh, checking the multi collinearity between the variables. So. Um, Multicollinearity it means when there is a correlation between a correlation between the uh, two response variable. Uh, so we, uh, multicollinearity will be happen when we have uh, such correlation a relationship is greater than or equal to 0 0.9. So uh, in order to analysis, in order to carry out the analysis for the multicollinearity test in the multivariate analysis of variance. The multicollinearity should be moderate. Even it should not be less than. It should not be also small, and it's not. It's not also. It's not also. It should not be also high. So I recommend you to when you have to uh, carry out the maneuver when the correlation between the two response variable is moderate. So if it is small, you have to use the uh, ANOVA. And uh, if it is high, you have, I recommend you to transform or to trim your data. For example, I here I here use the core underscore uh, test function when I want to compare two response variables. Here is grease and exit four. But if I want to compare more than two, you have to use instead of core test, you have to use core mat or core mat. But in our case, we have um, we are dealing with two response variables. So we have to use the core underscore test method. So indicate your data name. Connect through this the pipe, then use the core test function, and in the bracket put your response variable. In our case, it's grease and this one. So submit to this uh, to our studio. Yeah. So when we see the uh, 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 the p value, the sorry the uh, correlation, which is around zero point. Uh, 88. So it is not as such high. To say high or to say uh, uh, there is multicollinearity, the correlation should be 0 0.9. So it is safe. There is no multicollinearity problem. So there is absence of what? Multicollinearity. Uh, and the other one is the checking the linearity uh, assumption. This is especially used. Uh, this especially can be checked by uh, the uh, DG pairs, especially using the uh, DG Gali uh, package. So you can assign any name that you want here. Uh, I, I assign here is Aku. Then I indicate my data name. Here is my data name is Rutostop. I connect this through a pipe, which is built in the aerostatics package. Then I indicate the, here in the bracket my response variable. Then it's followed by the treatment. Now, in, in our case, the treatment is root stock. Again, group by your treatment. So in our case, the treatment here is also the uh, root stock. Then do this one. You will get the results. So type this, submit to our studio. Again, you can uh, run this one. And even you can uh, check uh, through plots by this way. Yeah. So it will give six different uh, uh, plots. Because we have six, uh, then our number of treatment is six. Yeah. Yeah, there is a problem in the linearity. Yeah. But uh, it's good enough. It's good enough. The first one it shows you the density plot. The second one is the scatter. The third one is the uh, correlation. So 
between the two, there is a high correlation. Uh, if it is significant correlation, means there is a, a linearity. There is a linearity among the two uh, variables, which is this uh, for uh, the last one for the uh, six root stock. So you can check by using this back arrow, yeah, for root stock five, root stock four, root stock three, root stock two, and root stock one. So I, I think the way you see the correlation value for all uh, for all uh, root stock type, yeah, it is uh, significant, significant. So there is uh, linearity. There is a linear relationship among uh, variables. Then after, let's see the uh, two um, uh, homogeneities, homogeneities for covariance, especially using the box uh, M test function, which is built in the R statics package. And the last one is homogeneity of variance, which is built by Leven test. So to check the uh, homogeneity of uh, covariance. So you have to use the box M function, indicate your data name in this form, and you can combine both the response variable that they are going to measure. Here is the, in our case, it's the two, there is the grids and the exit one, and indicate your uh, treatment. So our treatment is rootstock. So type this and submit to our uh, studio. So the p-value is 0 0.27. So the assumption for homogeneity of covariance is safe. If it is less than 0 0.05, there is a problem for homogeneity of what? Covariance. But uh, if, it, if it also, if it becomes significant, no need to be worried if you, if you have a balanced uh, design. But uh, you have to worry if you haven't uh, a balanced design and if, it's, for example, let's say if, it's a P, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05 and if your design is unbalanced, I suggest you two methods. The first is to transform your data. The second is to use the uh, PLAS uh, method instead of the Wilkes statics method. We will see in the coming videos. So check the homogeneity of variance by using a Leven test. So Type this and submit to our studio. All things are uh, uh, you have to copy or you have to use directly, but change here is the grease, or you have to put or you have to write your response variable in this way. Yeah, then here value should be explained by your treatment. And here you have to indicate your data. Then you have to use here is Leven. The test for checking homogeneity of variance. So submit this and run. Yeah, for both parameters, the p-value is greater than 0.05. So the assumption for homogeneity of variance is good or safe. So there is no violation of homogeneity of variance. So, so, so this is all about today's tutorial and uh, I will upload the remaining analysis in upcoming videos until then, if you have a question regarding to my tutorial, you can address me through my email or YouTube comment box. Thank you for watching. Have a nice time.